I often get the question where to start reading about historical facts, sources, things like that. So I'll share with you a story how it all started with me. When I was in Amsterdam studying with Jacques van Noordmessen, who had a, an incredible library of books still present today. We visited a few weeks ago his widow and his books are all there. Can I of course touch them with, it's incredible to see how he has penciled everything that he was thinking about when reading. So it's, it's, it's treasure on information. But when I was in Amsterdam in 1993, I think the second or third year I was studying with him before the summer break, summer holiday, holiday, I asked him what would be a good read during the summer holiday. And I remember him watching to me a little bit surprised if I was really serious about that. And so he gave a title of a book, which I immediately went buying in with the conservatory, Svilling Conservatory was still in Van Baarlestraat. So on the opposite of the street, you had Broekmans and Van Poppel, who also now left Amsterdam, very historically famous music store bookshop. And I bought this book, Der Musikbegriff in Deutschen Barock. Well, I share a secret with you now. I've never read it because it was too difficult for me. Written in German, uh, which was basically not a problem, but it's really difficult writing. I started to make notes and things like that. And still today, I'm sometimes looking up things, but it, this was not the right choice for me to start with. So. I came back in September and started to find slowly my own way because I really I had a hunger of reading things. But CPE Bach, the real theoretical sources, so to say, were too abstract for me and it didn't pay off because I was having lessons with the, with the, with the man, with the professor, who teached me all of that directly from his knowledge from those books. So anyway, I came in a bookshop called The Slechte which was, and still is today, a very famous second-hand bookshop. And in the, in the basement there, you had a department with new books which were out, out of print or not, or just sold by the uh, publishers in bulk, so to say. And there was this book. It's a compilation of the life of Moscheles, taken from his own words, so his own diaries. And so it's... It's not a summary, it gives the original content, but in English, so very in modern uh, letter type, and in between it gives the historical context um, about which Moscheles is talking. And Moscheles, this was a golden book for me. So the life, so Isaac uh, Ignaz Moscheles, the life of the composer and his encounters with Beethoven, Liszt, Chopin and Mendelssohn. So Moscheles lived a very long and prosperous life, was a great musician, was a generation before Liszt, traveling throughout whole Europe, was called by Liszt the pillar of the piano playing, but has witnessed a unique period, still had a lot of contacts with Beethoven, but then passed to a new generation of the Mendelssohns, was a very good friend of Mendelssohn, so his son Felix Moscheles is named after uh, Felix Mendelssohn. In fact, Moscheles, leading musician in London, came back to Leipzig to form the piano class of Leipzig, the conservatory established by Mendelssohn, and he stayed there after Mendelssohn's death. He had contacts with Liszt, Chopin, and all the greatest musicians, Clementi, he knew Clementi in London very well. Very nice anecdotes about this. So this is primary source material. And for me, it was like a light was shining. This was the kind of information I was looking for. It created, I've, I've talked about that a lot of times, a kind of three-dimensional um, image in my head, I was seeing Moscheles, I was hearing him talk and I was reflecting upon his reflections that he was writing about in his diaries. And since he was a very classical formed clavier player, he comments on the new 
way of playing that was introduced by people like Chopin, Liszt, but also another thing, and we've talked about that here in the ch on the channel a lot, and we'll talk about that much more, about the change of performances of the generation, maybe even after Liszt, how they increased tempi, how they um, uh, went from very classical technique to a very new modern technique in which they practiced a lot, played a lot of difficult things so that the, also the old works were played in a way that mostly didn't like or didn't approve. I started with this book and the hunger for that kind of information never stopped. So if you are looking for a way to start, things like this are really incredibly fun to read. So Moshe's obviously you have his complete diaries today also on internet downloadable, but you can also buy this in book form, which is easier to write. So here you have the full versions. If this is still available, I would buy that to start. But things like that, I managed to buy some things. Remember this is pre-Google time, in the 90s. These three volumes, valuable books actually, first prints, are the diaries of Clara Schumann, similar to that of Moscheles. You get an image, you get as close as to a person as you will never have the chance to get. But you have to read it from the first letter to the last. Persons with these kind of diaries get very much acquainted to you. So this is very difficult to read if you're not reading German. It's in uh, the Hochdeutsche letter type, so it's easy to read if you're used to that. I don't know if there is a translation. I doubt it, actually. So, But things like that are interesting to read. So then you have the letters of people. I would recommend starting there before even going to theoretical sources. You have things like, for instance, here, Robert Schumann, Gesammelte Schriften über Musik und Musiker. Today, doubtlessly, easy to find on, 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 uh, on internet. Primary information, it's like Robert Schumann talking to you, what he finds interesting on music of Chopin, when Liszt visited uh, Leipzig, uh, when he met Clara Schumann, things like that. It's all there. There is no filter in between. And so it sharpens your mind in a very direct way. So for me, if you ask me where to start, that's there to start. Letters, diaries, primary information. If after that you would like to go to some theoretical sources, of course you have uh, Emmanuel Bach, that's as a keyboard player, of course a must read. You have the original facsimile which might be difficult to read, but I think it's a must have. It's not too expensive, it's in German. You have also um, an English translation made in, I believe, 49. Still very good, very nice introduction um, by Mitchell. And you have the new version by the Packard Institute of uh, CPE Bach. It's in German, but it's in normal, modern font, so easier to read, with an introduction as well. We have to talk about the introduction soon, because there are some things I want to mention about that. Of course, Gottlob Turk, mentioned before, very practical method, very interesting. But if you want to start with theoretical uh, writings, I would recommend, and I have it here, it's Leopold Mozart's Violin Schiller. That's, I've covered that in a Q&A session uh, recently. Mozart is not, of course, keyboard playing, it's violin playing, but the kind of way he it describes accentuations on violin, you can apply it on clavichord and on pianoforte, obviously. It's kind of similar dynamic pattern, but is a very practical, there's a very practical source to start with. It's also available in English. You can buy it, you can download it in German. I don't think there is an English version available for download, but again, it's not so expensive. These reprints are um, easy to buy. And there's an easy read, very practical from his uh, perspective as a musician, uh, giving feedback on um, real life situations and the input is compared to Emmanuel Bach and Gottlob Türk is more practical than Emmanuel Bach. You will find, I believe, a lot of things in Leopold Mozart that set your mind in a thinking mode. 
And that's the most important thing. You will not find all solutions in the sources. Reason for that is easy because they are written within the context of their time. So in order to really get 100% out of them, you should grasp also, you should reconstruct the context of that time, which is extremely difficult and maybe even impossible. But the perspective, the way you look at it, it's very important. And reread those sources regularly because your perspective will change. You will start seeing connections between one source and another one. You will see connections between diaries, for instance. Hey, you have said about list this in 1840, but in 1880, I read this the same kind of thing with another person about list. So that gives a line that gives a perspective way more important, way more interesting, in fact, than only looking for the answers, because that's the big trap in reading historical sources, that you are diving into that to find your truth. And that's inescapable for anybody, because the perspective from which you enter these sources is your own, but change that often. Change your mind settings and then a world will open. And at the end, of course, it is your decision, but it sharpens your mind. And it, for me, to close this video with reading, I'm not reading every day these sources, but from time to time, I have always something to read occasionally. And it keeps me, the, it gives me the feeling of being connected in a way or another to that period, to those persons, more than reading secondary literature, that's all literature that goes, that writes about the sources, which is important as well, but that gives, of course, more the reflection of the author about the direct input of those people. As difficult sometimes to reconstruct that context is, is really refreshing to read. So there I would start, I hope, that gives um, some input for some of you. Let me know in the comments what you think about this and how you started reading um, the sources you're reading. Maybe that's of, for sure that's of uh, importance and that can be of interest of others as well. So the comment section can be helpful as well to many. So anyway, thank you for watching. If this is your first time on Authentic Sound, I'd love to have you subscribed and we see each other very soon again. Bye.